Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, session 14, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about Dr. Ayashetu Musa Maliki, PhD. Ayashetu is a lecturer in the Department of Nursing Science at Amadou Bello University in Kaduna, Nigeria. She holds a Bachelor of Nursing degree and is a registered nurse and midwife in Nigeria. She's very experienced and has um, doctoral studies from the University of Cape Town and has also developed a screening tool for intimate partner violence. She obtained her PhD nursing degree in 2019. She's been published in both local and international journals and has attended several local and international conferences. Her interests are in maternal and child health, disaster emergency preparedness, gender-based violence, clinical nursing, and ethical issues in nursing. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Ayashetu Musa Maliki, and I will hand you over the presenter. Thank you, Jane, for that introduction. Welcome, everyone, wherever you're watching from, to the virtual International Day of Midwife. The topic is the putting screening for intimate violence by pregnant women in northern Nigeria. Now, I will talk on the background method with that and the, and the recommendation. Intimate partner violence is a serious public health issue. It affects women's rights, and because of this, it violates the fundamental rights of women. And it's the major cause of mortality and mobility and disability globally. And yet, this intimate partner violence can be prevented. Um, mitigated when, um, when identified early. The this is any behavior that can cause physical or sexual or psychological harm, including aggressive or coercive controlling behavior to an intimate partner, either currently in a relationship or past or partner. In the developed country, the prevalence of intimate partner violence among pregnant women range 1% to 20%. And in Africa, the prevalence is uh, 27% in Uganda and 27%. The prevalence in Africa is due to the or method of data collection and setting and further study. In Nigeria, here the study was conducted. The IS is in South Nigeria, which is nine percent, and two percent in North Nigeria. The North Nigeria where the study was conducted is where the no screening being done and which is not being done and no reporting of violence in health facilities. This should become, you have to accept to be here if it really represents what is happening in the north. The effect of intimate partner violence on pregnant women is so tremendous. It affects the pregnant negative and on one side. It can lead to confusion, it can also lead to sexually transmitted disease and post-traumatic stress. It can also lead to preterm level of infecting abortion or miscarriage. Homicide and they are not left out also. The effect on the on the child, the unborn child is that it can lead to low birth stress syndrome. It also leads to delay initiating or breastfeeding to the newborn child, as such, affect the mental and physical development of the child. 
and preliminary target or to a total list of preliminary targets. The, the biggest danger of the standardized questions of symptoms free women are called a procedure that is not very from a place to place. They receive freely and test to, to early identify symptoms of IPV. It also leads to management and referral of the IPV early can also prevent future violence intervention will be put in place. It also leads to awareness and sensitization of IPV or the pregnant women. It also reduces the social stigma associated with IPV since all pregnant women will be screened for infant personal violence. So it doesn't mean that it's those that come down with mental partner violence that will be seen. But the social stigmatization will be reduced. And studies have shown that it is cost effective and not harmful to women. The position of, of midwife on women. Midwives are in a unique position to screen pregnant women because they have been pregnant women regular visits during their intimate clinic. And due to this regular visit, the midwives and pregnant women they have a special relationship in which pregnant women can easily confide in the midwives. And also, the organization that endorses within screening and includes within screening for IPV by midwives. So we have the American Notice Association, we have the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists, and we have the American College of Nurse Midwives. The, in developed countries, such as the United States and United States of America, United Kingdom, Australia, and we are accepted with their screening for the process and social visits. And it's good to know that within screening is being practiced in this country. In Nigeria, where the study is being conducted, John and colleagues conducted a study and they found that the acceptability rate of Although this woman is not sure, is not sure to the digital Violence with abuse assessment screening tool by the midwife. 
in the antenatal clinic. The pregnant men that we are excluded from these studies were those who are 36 weeks pregnant due to the due to the the gestational age of the pregnancy and the food the doctor attends to those more more before others. So we will not be able to obtain the data from them and they will not be able to wait to fill the questionnaire to resent further from the study. Um, pregnant men that may be sick or have emergency will also exempt as if that was a simple random sample. We have a, a meeting, a, we have a piece of paper in the bowl where we wrote one and some paper we left blank. We left that on the table. We have to explain that we have the pregnant women to pick a piece of paper. If they pick one, they will be given the questionnaire. If I blank, they will be hard to wait for the doctor to see them. The sample size was 19. This sample size was determined using this marine transit with a confidence, with confidence level of 5% and inter 5. So we derived at base using the sample calculator. The, on the sample size, the total women's are 150. So that we have around fifty, we have an average of two hundred and thirty pregnant women attending the antenatal clinic. The instrument we used to attend her was a questionnaire after being screened by the abuse assessment training tool. The data collection started the first week of January 2017. We have been on how to use the abuse assessment training tool. And also the abuse assessment training tool was also translated to the local language, which is AUSA. And back translated back to English by two individuals from the Department of Nigerian and African Culture in Bavaria. Uh, on the commencement of this of the screening, the research uh, I was introduced to the pregnant women by the midwife during the and um, during the health talk in the Antinata. In Nigeria, we do our health talk in group. In which we don't have um, the, the partner of the pregnant we are not allowed into the antenatal clinic. They are they are, they stay out of the antenatal. It's only the pregnant women that are allowed into the antenatal clinic. So this is us to discover. So they, uh, I was introduced to them by the midwife uh, and we explained the research process and we proceed for voluntary participation of the pregnant women to be screened. Then after 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 the you after screen uh, those women that uh, volunteer interest, we are taken to the room and given the form permission sheet to read and we'll explain further and we we'll obtain consent. After we we'll obtain consent from the pregnant women, we are taken we are taken to another private room where there is screen by the midwife himself. The screen the woman for intimate partner violence using the abuse assessment screening tool. The after screening, the pregnant woman will ask to pick a piece of paper from the board to see if they will be given the questionnaire or not. And those the selected one will be given the questionnaire to see. Those that could not speak English, they use the outer uh, abuse assessment screening tool for them. And if they pick one from the board, they will also give it, or the research assistant will also. Uh, also invited to study, they also working for the study, they will focus for the study. The research assistant translate the, the questionnaire, he explains the answer to them and also write it for those that cannot do that could not write uh, write their response. When they say it in answer, she writes it in the questionnaire. But this was done for few because those that couldn't um couldn't write were just And this process was repeated over two months. It was this one because we have to screen these pregnant women before we give them the questionnaire. So if they are not screened, we cannot give them the questionnaire. And due to the tight schedule of the midwife in the antenatal clinic, we, we don't want to disrupt their normal routine. So we give them the allowance. Due 
to the Tai Chi Chavir, the midwife, they are allowed them to screen for over two months, for almost two months. And when they screen, we give them the questionnaire. We are there almost we are there every day to collect the youth at this assessment screening flu and to collect the, uh, the questionnaire skills by the pregnant women. The questionnaire contains social democracy data and the question on and an open question on reason to explain their answers. Their answers. The abuse clinic, for those who don't know, abuse clinic is just followed by McFarland. It it has five questions. Uh, in where I'm from, where we have very reliable internet, so it can be problematic. Hello, this is Jane. I'm one of the facilitators helping out. Our, our other facilitator, Jimmy, is also with us and she was hoping to present as well, uh, but she is also um, in Nigeria, so we're having a lot of connection um, problems. Thanks, Carolyn. It's, it's much appreciated. So if it's okay, um, I share to, I'm going to go ahead um, and take the presenter back and um, look through your slides while you re-establish um, your connection. I think she's actually um, gone again. Well, that's exactly right. <laughs> There's Halima. Hi, Halima. Yeah, I'm going to mute myself now. Okay, that's great. Um, I think we've lost uh, Aisha again, Aisha too. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the presenter. And as we can see, um, it does appear that um, we need to do routine screening for intimate partner violence, and that would be wherever wherever we are um, in the world. That would be so super important. And <clears throat> all pregnant women, irrespective of ethnicity, religion, and background, really accepted um, this screening policy. Pregnant women do feel that routine screening for intimate partner violence will ensure safe life for both them and their unborn child. And I'm seeing, oh, good, you're back. Hooray. Let me unmute you. That's so awesome. Uh, I don't see that you've got, um, you don't have your microphone back yet. Can you speak, Ayashetu? Yeah, I know it's all, it's, you have a lot of, uh, sister midwives uh, from Nigeria, we are very, very sympathetic. So I was just speaking. Um, if you'd like to chat in the chat box, um, I can move your slides for you because um, we do need to <coughs> start concluding. That would be great. Is that Jumi? Yeah, here. I'm here. I'm just you, wondering you... if Aisha is back. Aisha too is back. I'm not sure. She is back, but her sound, she has no microphone. So would you like to just um, read through? I will make you the presenter again. Um, yes. That would be fantastic. Let me just find you again, Jimmy. Yeah, Ayashetu is here, but her she doesn't have a microphone. So I'm going to just make you the um, presenter. There you go. And I'm going to just... Uh, Okay. Um, am I on now? All right. So, from the study, um, she has identified that um, the prevalence of IPV in pregnant women visiting a tertiary hospital in northern Nigeria is uh, um, 
quite high. The lens of and pregnant women were satisfied and accepted um, routine um, screening for IPV to be incorporated into the ANC routine. That means they were they were they were very they were they were well disposed to it, and the form of IPV that the women um, talked about or know about is the physical IPV, intimate partner violence. However, the screening tool failed to pick the sexual violence that could be experienced by some of these pregnant women. That's um, a limitation. And of course, this calls for money for the assessment tool that was used to be quite cultural sensitive to pregnant women in Nigeria. And of course, we need to appeal to the cultural sentiments of these women. Um, trying to see what's this. Okay, she has some recommendations here that routine screening for IPV is not being practiced in Nigeria, and that is the truth. It's quite, um, if this is incorporated into ANC, if um, on a routine basis, it would be very fantastic. And so that's one recommendations because um, the women are quite disposed to it, and it's actually a matter of urgency. We need to look at um, components of our ANC again see how um, badly affected some of these women are already, especially because they are not quite receptive to routine IPV screening. And she recommended that the hospital management to ensure um, efficient impl implementation of the policies by midwife. Also, she recommended that there should be training because this is quite novel for us. We don't do routine screening uh, um, for pregnant women, maybe for some women with cases, but not for pregnant clients or antenatal clients. So she's ready to be trained. That I be expert, they can bring women and um, I see that your speaker is back. Do you want to give her a chance? Ensuring the collection and then collection will be an effective management system. Those are recommendations she has. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, um, um, your, your speaker is back. Do you want to give her a chance to speak? Oh, okay. she was back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there Thank she is. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank on you. you go. Sorry for that. I was having some challenges here. Internet connection. Okay, for my recommendation, as a matter of engineering, since we have seen that the prevalence is high and also the accessibility rate is also high, the policy maker at all relevant level should make policy as part of to include routine screening for intimate partner violence in the routine in a center routine. Also, the management and all left house they should ensure that this policy are being implemented by the midwife. And also this midwife, they are not really being trained to train they have not even been trained to stand for intimate partner violence. So there should be a training for the midwife to be able to carry out screening effectively. And resources should be available for this children because it's ethically wrong to screen somebody and when you don't have uh, you don't have uh, care to give the person, you don't have anything to give the person. Well, that is the person's strength positive. So there should be resources for this women. And also there should to be collaboration between our government organization and law assessment agency and judiciary system. We find that, that these women they might want to take a step further to fix a court order or to get the police involved. So if the hospital are in collaboration with these people, it will be easy to assess them and they will give priority to pregnant women if, um, because of her condition also. Uh, you may can on the slide, you're taking the presentation away from me.
Thank you. Is that you finished your presentation now? You are taking the presentation right away. I can't turn my slides. I can't flip my slides. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, well, it's okay. I've got it. Hello, Jane. You're back. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, for some reason, Halima has the uh, thing. Let me just find her. Oh, dear. Sorry, I'm just trying to find our speaker in the long list of presenters here. Halima, if you can hear, if you can give the presenter button. Oh, there's Ayesha too. There we are. There we go. Thanks, Linda. Okay, thank you very much. The limitation of this study is that it's only conducted in a study. In a, on your hospital, due to the pregnant women and the resources available of school extended to other hospitals, therefore, generalization of this study should be your discussion. Thank you. Well, what a, what a beautiful presentation, um, Dr. Musa Maliki. We are so honoured to have you. Um, I think it was actually great, Aisha, because we were able to really concentrate um, on your message uh, from Nigeria and really a universal uh, problem now uh, for intimate partner violence. And as somebody said, not just for the, the, the women, but also we need to consider the men that are exposed to this as well. Are there any questions for Dr. Musa Maliki? Everyone is saying very well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will be um, we will be presenting uh, this uh, also uh, in our YouTube channels and everything um, else. I'm going to just take back uh, the presenter. Oh, um, Ayesha, could you say again the prevalence of IPV in the study? That's a question from Ginger Midwife. Okay, but preventing the IPV in the study, the lifetime prevalence is 32 percent of 90 respondents. Why that in index pregnancy is 24 percent of the 30 of 29 women that came down with IPV? Okay, IPV is the uh, intimate partner volume. Um, and um, if you could just clarify for Denise, could you just say again how you define intimate partner violence? Okay, it was physical violence, sexual, psychological harm to a pregnant woman by a spouse or partner in a relationship. Okay, thank you. We got that. Thank you so much for um, the clarification, Denise. And we really appreciate it again. I'm going to go ahead um, and turn off the record button.